today's program. Plans are running full steam ahead for the implementation of a national biosafety framework for Sinusha. I am Amanda Fee Clark and this is Agriculture in Focus. Details straight ahead. Good day and welcome. Plans are running full steam ahead for the implementation of a national biosafety framework for Sindusha. Today, members of the National Biosafety Coordinating Committee, comprising many stakeholders including the Ministry of Agriculture, Customs and Excise Department, the Caribbean Environmental Health Institute, SAI, and the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation and Agriculture, ECA, meant to not only strategize on the best ways to increase public participation in the initiative, but also to formally establish the role of each partner organization on the committee. On this Agriculture in Focus, Janelle Gabriel, the project coordinator of the National Biosafety Implementation Project, expounds on the relevance of biosafety measures and the important role each individual plays in maintaining biosafety in Sedusha. Welcome, Ms. Gabriel, and thank you so much for joining us on Agriculture in Focus today. Thank you for having me. When we last spoke, we discussed on the implementation of a national biosafety project in Sinusha. How has the journey been thus far? Well, thus far it's been good. It's been very interesting. The National Biosafety Framework, as we discussed, is a four-pronged approach to controlling and managing the use of genetically modified organisms in St. Lucia. So those four pillars would be establishing an administrative system, having a regulatory system, having a public education and participation system, and also a means of risk assessment. So far in our journey, we've been focusing a lot on our regulatory system as well as the public education and public participation aspects of the project. In terms of the policy framework, Ms. Gabriel, for the National Biosafety Act, what structures are being put in place to realize a smooth introduction of the biosafety legislation in St. Lucia? Uh, currently, we are consulting with different agencies. We have the Ministry of Agriculture, we have Foreign Affairs, Customs, we have the South Lewis Community College, and many other partners, and we are working to create a biosafety act. That act would cover the introduction of genetically modified organisms, legislation for persons who want to bring in genetically modified organisms, fines that they would have to pay if they do not comply with the law, etc. So we're putting things in place so that right down to the nitty gritty of who goes where and who does what, so people understand what genetically modified organisms are and how we can use them safely. Because as we know, there are some benefits, but there may be some health concerns. So we want to ensure that we take into consideration how we can protect the public and also protect our biodiversity. You said there are positive features of genetically modified organisms and there may be some negative, some negatives coming out of genetically modified organisms. Yes. Why the thrust so much now on implementing such a, such, an, a, such a legislation or project in terms of safeguarding our biodiversity and our biosafety here in Sinusha? Well, St. Lucia has a, a national strategy. We want to be more competitive in agriculture, so we want to be able to use whatever modern biotechnology is available to us. If it is possible for farmers to use a change in the genes of a plant or a crop to get a higher yield, to get a better product, and to make us more competitive, then we want to be able to use that to our advantage. So that would help us to give us an economic standing, you know. But we also want that if there are any health concerns, we want to be able to know what they are and know how to address them in the future. So that would take into consideration some of our agricultural policies, our food security policies, land use policies, and, and things that are already in place and therefore help to strengthen our Biosafety Act. Barbados, well, our neighboring island, Barbados, have gone into researching the impact of genetically modified organisms. In fact, they do use genetically modified organisms or GM foods in Barbados. 
any word on that or any plans in place in Sinusha to actually initiate or launch or to start up, commission a lab which would take into account the research of GM foods or mm-hmm. the research of um, genetically modified organisms? That's a great question. And the fact that we have free trade and the CSME coming on board, we really have to pay attention to what's going on in other countries. So this is why St. Lucia is implementing its biosafety framework, but not on its own. It's doing it in partnership with 12 other countries around the region. So whatever is going on in one country, we want to make sure we know it, so, uh, know about it so that whatever we're controlling is also being controlled in other countries. Now, as far as a lab, we do have plans in place to furnish a lab to enhance the plant tissue culture lab in the Ministry of Agriculture and equip them so that they are able to test and detect genetically modified organisms. That is on stream. We're in the process of doing a capacity assessment so we know what we have, what we need, what training we need, what further equipment we will be needing. And then later on in the year, we can purchase and start the training and and get that lab fully operational. And it really sounds as a comprehensive approach to implementing this project in Sinusha, the biosafety project. Yes, it, 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 because biosafety is such a new field for us, there is a lot of training, a lot of knowledge enhancement that has to go into it. So it's exciting whilst it is maybe a little bit um, unknown and uncharted, but it's exciting because we do have a lot of training and, and things coming on board. What are the specific provisions, Ms. Gabriel, that are contained in the legislation that the public should be aware of? Well, in this act, one of the things that is mandated is that the government gives the public an opportunity to give feedback on any decisions that are made with regards to genetically modified organisms. So what that means is if someone makes an application to start growing a genetically modified organism for intentional release into the environment, we have to inform the public and give them a channel whereby they can give feedback and say what they think, what they think should be done. And their feedback would be included in the final decision. So it's it's sort of um, novel in the fact that we are asking for the public's feedback and sometimes people say well we don't have a say in our government in this case you do have a say it is your health it is your environment and you definitely have a say in what decisions are made in terms of in terms of what genetically modified organisms or living modified organisms are allowed into the country so no sure, currently we have a few acts that are in place in terms of preserving the environment. I think there is the Biodiversity Act or, or mm-hmm. something to that nature. Yes. And I know through our discussions you have said that the biosafety or I know that you have said that the Biosafety Act will draw on some of the components of these acts that are already in, in use. Can you just expound on that for me please? Okay, so the Biosafety Act considers some of the national objectives, some of St. Lucia's national objectives, some of the plans that we have and the development goals. So things like protecting our biodiversity, because we know biodiversity is the foundation for any economic growth. We wouldn't be able to do anything without our trees, without our rivers, without our plants and our animals. So we want to make sure we preserve that foundation. And that is considered in some other policies that are already existing. So while we are drawing up the Biosafety Act, taking into consideration those factors that are already in other policies, like I mentioned, the Agricultural Policy, the Food Safety Act, and also the Biodiversity Conservation Bill, and other policies like that, which speak specifically to preserving the environment in its pristine condition, and also uh, looking out for human health. Yes, so how now does this tie into our agriculture landscape here? Okay, so like I'm saying, the agricultural policy and and our land policy, which currently caters to where certain activities can take place. So for instance, let's say a farmer made an application to try out a, a strain of genetically modified corn. We would look at where is that going to be taking place, where is that activity taking place, what is downstream from him, what rivers will he impact, is he near a watershed, are there other farms nearby where the GM product can spread and become contaminated. And so all of those factors are going to impact on agriculture and those things will be considered as part of the biosafety initiative. 
And it's true that the bar safety initiative is being spearheaded by your ministry, which is the Ministry of Sustainable Development, Energy, Science and Technology, and that the Ministry of Agriculture is the national competence authority functioning as the main partner in this project. What would you say is the best way the Ministry of Agriculture can now push the issue or the message of bar safety within the agriculture context? The Ministry of Agriculture has been playing a phenomenal role in the implementation of the biosafety framework. They, as the competent authority, have the technical expertise. They have the biotechnologists, the plant tissue culture um, experts, the veterinary experts, etc. So they've been playing a critical role. Another thing that they can do is to spread the word through agricultural extension officers who go out and speak with farmers and just give them more information about what GMs are and what part they can play. We need to pause now for a break, but when we return on Agriculture in Focus, we will discuss more on the implementation of our National Biosafety Framework. And we'll be right back. Friday, February 22nd, on the grounds of the Fish Fish Complex, the St. Lucia Fish Marketing Corporation and the Seafood Gardens joins the nation in celebrating 34 years of independence with a grand fish and seafood fiesta. Unlock the creativity. Join seafood vendors from Denry, Ancillary and Grosley for all your sumptuous fish and seafood dishes. Side attractions, local steel pan, the secret solo group, bouncing castles for the kids and lots more. Independence Day Fish and Seafood Fiesta. 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. on the grounds of the Fisheries Complex. Join the activity to unlock the creativity. The focus, the vision, needs all of us. Welcome back, Miss Gabriel. Thank you, thank you. And to our listeners just joining us, Ms. Gabriel is the Project Implementation Coordinator of the National Biosafety Project and is attached to the Ministry of Sustainable Development, Energy, Science and Technology. Before the break, Ms. Gabriel, we spoke on the policies as it pertains to the implementation of Sinusha's National Biosafety Framework. The policies falling under the regulatory systems is just one pillar of the overall framework. Much consideration will be given to this aspect, but Heavy emphasis, as you mentioned earlier, will be placed on the public participation and education this year. Absolutely. What shape will your outreach take? We want for every St. Lucian to know what a GMO is and what an LMO is. We want it to be part of a normal conversation. We want people to have information on it. So we have started distributing posters, flyers, and um, other magazine articles, newspaper articles, which give information on GMOs and LMOs. We also want to use all forms of media. So we have um, radio ads, television ads and interviews, and we have other interactive surveys and debates coming up in the future. We want people to know what the subject is so that they can now make a decision and give their feedback, have their voice added to the conversation. So that's part of the strategy, giving information. Another thing that's coming up is the PSAs. We're launching some of our PSAs, and please look out for those because they will give you information on how you can now play your part in the decision making process as far as genetically modified organisms. So look out for them on all TV stations and all social media, Facebook, YouTube, etc. Would you be able to give us an idea of what the initial response has been to the information being disseminated right now? Well, right now, it's it's a little mixed. Some people don't have any clue what, what GMOs are, so they're a little skeptical. Some people who know some information are also skeptical because they don't know what the long-term effects are. But what we keep encouraging people to do is to get more information, find out more about it, go onto our website, you know, put in a Google search and search GMOs and, and see what information is out there so that you are equipped to make a decision for yourself. Uh, and this is very vital information going out right now because my next question was really how can the average solution participate in the ongoing initiatives to manage GMOs and ultimately to enhancing our biosafety in Sinusha? Yes. Can you just, uh, well, the number one thing, get the information. You can go onto our website and it's lc.biosafetyclearinghouse.net. That's lc. 
dot biosafety clearinghouse dot net and you can also send us an email if you want to get some more information some more pamphlets if you want us to come out and speak at an event that you're having and that email is slu biosafety at govt dot lc slu b i o s a f e t y at govt dot lc uh, thank you so much miss gabriel any final words on public participation in this biosafety drive at this time just the final thing i would have to say is look out for us because right now we we've done some school visits with some of the big soca artists like ambi and mongsta and we've gone to the schools and this, the kids have been so fascinated by just having those stars in their midst and giving them information on stuff that's you know vital for them so look out for us look out for our psas and stay tuned because this is important for you it's important for the environment it's important for preserving biodiversity and we want to thank you so much miss gabriel for coming and joining us on agriculture culture and focus i know and you know the public is now becoming more aware that the discussion on or the issue of bio safety and genetically modified organisms and lmos and gm foods it will be ongoing it's a big deal yes. th- the world over and in sinusha we now need to attune ourselves with what's happening so as to yes. preserve our bio safety in sinusha preserve our biodiversity also yes. and maintaining our health yes. essentially and i want to thank you so much for coming thank once you for again thank you for And it is here we conclude this week's Agriculture in Focus. Agriculture in Focus is a production of the Ministry of Agriculture, Food Production, Fisheries and Rural Development. Until next week, I'm Amanda Fay Clark. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>